in the name of allah the most beneficent and the most merciful assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh how are you dear students i hope you are doing well at your home and you are safe and sound i welcome you in pakistan international school taifs a virtual learning system for the session 2020 and this is biology class for first year boys and girls and we are having the lecture number 22 today dear students in the previous lecture we have completed unit 2 chapter number 2 in which we have just studied all the biological molecules in detail today we are gonna talk about enzymes yes very very important topic of biology because without enzymes there is no metabolic activity completed so we will talk about enzymes and first of all we'll see some of its introduction its structure and mechanism of enzyme action so let's get started dear students if you see this diagram these are enzymes enzymes why it is set uh, like the diagram is like this because enzymes are globular in structure most of the time and they are we know that they are protein so you can see enzymes and substrate is coming to attach the enzyme at its active site and then we are having uh, like product which is uh, here the splitting or uh, lysis of that molecule so enzymes can do a synthesis reaction as well as lytic reaction also so what are enzymes we will see that actually enzymes are biological catalysts and they are protein in nature they are protein in nature so they are synthesized in biological cells in all organisms so we in all living organisms and they are involved in all in all metabolic reactions catabolic or anabolic in both of the reactions enzymes play a very very important role so therefore enzyme catalyzed reactions are proceed in many foods as well and thus enhance or deteriorate food quality like this can you can see the action of enzyme in our daily life as well because when there is enhancing the uh, metabolic rate of any um, food or any production of new substance in living organisms or that is deteriorating um, also uh, like of any type of metabolic uh, reaction that is done with the help of enzymes so enzymes are biological catalysts and therefore they speed up the biochemical reactions without being consumed so without enzymes reactions are possible but they would proceed at very very slow speed that will have no significance for life so uh, like we can see the enzymes activities in our daily life as well we can see the ripening of fruits which is done uh, in fruits and as well as in vegetables naturally so that is also happened uh, with the help of enzymes aging of meat and dairy products so that is also done with the help of enzymes processing steps involved in the making of dough from wheat flours like for pizza for bread we make dough uh, with the help of yeast so uh, what yeast does it secretes its enzymes to 
uh, digest the carbohydrates and sugar which is present in the wheat flour. So then we get a proper wheat dough uh, for making the bakery items. Then uh, production of alcoholic beverages by fermentation technology uh, that can be also happen with the help of enzymes. So fermentation is what this is anaerobic respiration, which we have studied in the previous classes as. Okay, let's talk about uh, a little about the discovery of enzymes that the first enzyme was discovered in 1833 by a French chemist Anselme Payen and Persos. His colleague was Persos. Actually, what they were doing, both of them, they were doing the work on barley, barley seeds, and uh, these seeds were grounded or just soaked in the water for several days for making a crude mixture um, that would digest starch. So that enzyme of which they got from that uh, mixture that was diastase, and this diastase is actually called as the first enzyme discovered by Payen and Persos. In a, later on, in 1877, German physiologist well, um, Wilhelm Kone, he first used the term enzymes in the history like he uh, like before that uh, discovery is done like the thing of which can destroy or digest the larger molecules of uh, carbohydrates so that uh, that was diastase so later on uh, on the basis of these studies he gave them uh, the substances the name enzymes to cut off means to cut okay so uh, uh, the name is telling you wherever the word is is written most of the time they are enzymes like hexokinase so ase is written you will see in uh, the, the chapters in the uh, in this chapter in the next topics as well some examples of enzymes and you can understand they are enzymes with their name okay so let's talk about the properties of an enzyme so we all know that enzymes are biological catalysts which make the reaction faster. This is very, very important property of that, that they act as a catalyst. Enzymes lowers the energy of an energy input or that is called activation energy. Activation energy required for a chemical reaction to proceed. We'll talk about in the next uh, topics as well that what is activation energy? That is actually the energy which is required to activate any chemical reaction. So this energy usually it is very high, but in with the uh, when we use enzymes in that, so activation energy gets lower. So they make the energy lower and that is a good a thing for our metabolic activities that we can um, like we can save our more energy uh, while using enzymes in our metabolic reactions 
So enzymes speed up the reaction, rate of reaction several, several times. You know, there are up to almost 10 to raise power 6 to 10 to raise power 14 at times faster they can speed up the reaction as compared to the uncatalyzed reaction. So enzymes are protein in nature. All the enzymes are protein in nature. But we know that all proteins are not enzymes, but all enzymes are protein in nature. And they can, uh, like they can uh, change their shape from linear structure to secondary or quaternary structure. And then they can also attain the tertiary tertiary structure as well. Enzymes remain unchanged after a reaction, therefore can work again. And definitely it happens that they are uh, like they are, uh, when they are performing the any type of metabolic activity, so they can be the part of that uh, metabolic activity, metabolic reaction, but after the reaction, uh, they are just uh, remain unchanged like its chemical uh, nature is unchanged and they can work again for the same reaction it means they can be utilized again and again so enzymes are specific to the substrate this is also very very important so they follow lock and key mechanism, which we'll talk about later on. Like they're very specific, uh, and like according to their shape and function as well, uh, which type of uh, substrate is going to attach to the enzyme that is a specific according to its structure. Enzymes are reversible and can catalyze a reaction going both ways. Yes, they can, uh, they are uh, reversible, means they can perform both of the metabolic activities like catabolism and anabolism, in which they can synthesize the reaction as well as they can break up the, uh, the any type of product as well. So they can do both of the reactions. So enzymes are uh, denatured. If the temperature is high, if the temperature my pH is high. We'll talk about these uh, properties in detail as well, how the conditions affect the activity and nature of the enzymes. Definitely, we know that they are proteins, so definitely they will be denatured when, When there is a rise in temperature or decrease in temperature or like the change in pH, they can also be changed. So in our body, the uh, optimum temperature at which they can work more effectively, that is 37 degrees centigrade and optimum pH is 7. Okay. Now let's talk about some more detail about enzymes. So we will go, uh, we'll discuss enzyme structure. We know that enzymes are protein in nature and which are chains of amino acids. You can see amino acids. Uh, uh, they form uh, polypeptide long chains which are linear in structure because when proteins are formed, so they are in linear form. We have seen in the previous chapter. So they can change their shape from linear to, uh, according to the need, a secondary, a tertiary or quaternary structure. Because they have a folded a 3D shape, if you can see here, so that uh, look like a globular structure, and this shape determines an enzyme's function as well, like how actively it can perform the function. Actually, they are having very high molecular weight because they are made up of long polypeptide chains and. Um, 
almost they are having molecular weights of uh, from 10000 to almost 2 million or 1 1 to 2 million molecules in that so you can see here almost this is enzyme and you can see here is the substrate so it is going to attach here like how it is happened it is having an active site on which mm, the enzyme is going to attach and this active site why it is active site because it is having some kind of um, this type of uh, functional groups are present which are having charges on them and they are going to attach with a substrate and bind uh, the substrate bind with uh, active site. Actually the substrate or that is called a reactant that is attached to the active site by non-covalent interaction like hydrogen bonding and hydrophobic reactions. So active sites consist of almost a 3 to 12 amino acid which which may scattered all around in this polypeptide chain. So what happened? They, uh, when there is conformational change from linear to globular and other secondary or tertiary structure, so this protein molecule just uh, brought uh, like uh, it brings together all the active sites and bind and makes bond here and then it becomes the active site at one place so we can and see from this diagram that these parts of active sites are spread all over the polypeptide chain and then when it makes its a secondary and tertiary structure so just all the active sites just come together and bind here like a node in the rope. So grouping of amino acids of polypeptide during the formation of tertiary structure to produce an active site that is done here in this diagram you can see properly so this enzyme actually you can see here it is uh, very very specific in nature as well because you can see this is protease protease is the enzyme which can digest proteins in our uh, body so uh, it will definitely bind protein with it not any other carbohydrate or fats because these molecules are having different molecular structure or uh, structure um, so you can see this will bind here if you can see properly according to their differences in the structure so active site of an enzyme is having two sides that is binding site and catalytic site binding site actually uh, we know that uh, for example this is substrate so it is having some binding sites all also like it is having such type of groups and uh, uh, present in that uh, or charges in that which can bind with this uh, enzyme so binding site just hold the substrate in the place and uh, then what happened uh, catalytic on the catalytic side the reaction is going to be done so when this one will bind here so then the reaction will go on and this is the catalytic site where the reaction has to be 
uh, done. So what will happen? This will break into two substances, into two molecules like this. So a binding site is for binding the substance or holding the substrate in its place, but as a catalytic site where the reaction is going on. Okay, in the structure, some more uh, structures which are very, very important for the enzyme. Otherwise, enzyme cannot work properly. So those are called non-protein parts of the enzymes. So in non-protein part, some enzymes also require these non-protein parts and that non-protein part is cofactor and that is very, very important and without that enzyme cannot perform its function. So when the substrate is attached, the cofactor is present over there for the attachment of the substrate. So it is not only responsible, a cofactor is not only responsible for the attachment of substrate to the active site, but also participate in catalytic process. So the final shape of active site is actually established after the attachment of cofactors. First cofactor will be attached with this enzyme and then uh, the substrate uh, can attach. So the enzyme which requires this cofactor becomes active only if the cofactor is bind with it. So that enzyme is called hollow enzyme. It means the enzyme which performs the function only in the presence of cofactor. So that enzyme is called a hollow enzyme. If the cofactor is not available, so what will happen? The rem remaining protein part of enzymes become catalytic inactive. This will become some because some enzymes just perform the function in the presence of cofactor, but if the cofactor is not available, so that enzyme is no more for the uh, metabolic activities. So that is of no use. So that enzyme is called apoenzyme. On the other hand, when the enzymes which do not require cofactor can also show active end inactive sites. So here you can see the catalytic site where this, uh, this is a place where uh, the substrate will bind. There is an other substance, uh, means an other uh, part of the enzyme that is called coenzyme. Actually, coenzyme is the organic cofactor, and they are the derivatives of, of vitamins. Derivatives of the vitamins. So, for example, there are ATPs, NAD, plus, FAD, plus are common coenzymes, and they perform their functions. In, uh, that is very, very important uh, regarding like respiration and photosynthesis processes. Okay, so here we will see some of, uh, like uh, we have seen some non-protein part of this, uh, what we can say the enzyme. So, okay, if you, uh, you see uh, like uh, apoenzyme, uh, apoenzyme and hollow enzyme, but there are, uh, but the, if the enzymes do not require, uh, here, hollow enzyme requires cofactor, but if uh, cofactor is not available, that is called apoenzyme, that is um, not having any activity. But if the cofactor is not involved, so what happened, there are certain uh, like enzymes which act like that. In place of this cofactor, there is additional polypeptide fragment or polypeptide chain attached here. 
Here we are having example of pepsin. Pepsin is an enzyme which digests protein in the body, but that is secreted by gastric uh, gastric gland of our stomach. So what happened? But this is uh, this is secreted by gastric gland, uh, like uh, the glands which are present in the wall of the stomach. In inactive form, that is called pepsinogen. So pepsinogen is inactive because it is having uh, uh, like a polypeptide fragment attached on that, for example, here or in the place of cofactor. So this polypeptide fragment is deattached when this pepsinogen uh, is secreted in the presence of HCl. This HCl hydrochloric acid is also present in the stomach. So this HCl removes this polypeptide chain and then uh, this pepsinogen becomes a pepsin and then it can perform the digestion of protein in the stomach. So let's talk about some type of cofactors. So cofactors can be inorganic or organic molecules. If cofactors are inorganic, they can be different metabolic ions. That can be iron, magnesium, copper, and zinc, etc. These are attached to the enzyme when the substrates gets bind or gets attached with that enzyme and they can be detachable but somehow they are called activators as well because they enhance the activity of enzymes if we talk about uh, this uh, these cofactors or activators you can see hydro uh, hexokinase hexokinase is the enzyme which transfer an inorganic phosphate group from ATP to the substrate in the presence of magnesium. So here, this ATP gives one phosphorus to glucose, so it will become glucose 6-phosphate and then it will become ADP. If organic cofactors uh, they can be coenzyme and prosthetic groups. We know that coenzymes are the derivatives or vitamins and um, like inorganic cofactors. Uh, here we have talked about inorganic cofactors. So if uh, organic cofactors are, they can be coenzymes. So inorganic cofactors, they if they are also attached to the enzymes, but they are detachable. But if they are not detachable, they are called prosthetic group. So cofactors are of different types, inorganic and organic. If inorganic, they are metal ions. If organic, they are the derivatives of vitamins. So if they are detachable or non-covalently bound, they are called coenzymes. And if they are permanently attached with them and without that the eruptions cannot be occurred so that are covalently bound and they are called prosthetic group for example heme group here and in coenzyme NAD enzyme let's talk about mechanism of enzyme action that is uh, how the enzyme uh, perform its function actually enzyme binds with a substrate when it binds with a substrate, it uh, just make enzyme substrate complex and then substrate is converted into the required product. This is like uh, enzyme and substrate, they form enzyme substrate complex and then enzyme substrate complex 
uh, then a change into enzyme product as well because enzymes did, uh, does not utilize itself in the reaction and then it will remain as such and then can be utilized again in the same reaction. So there are two type of models which are described by the scientists in 1894, Emil Fischer has described this model, like this procedure that enzymes and uh, act as log and key function. Like enzyme is key here and substrate is log here. Like they are, uh, they describes that there are too much specific to the substrate, like if um, particular substrate which is having the specific structure like it is having on the active side of the enzyme then it can bind with the enzyme and perform its function otherwise this is um, like uh, uh, cannot be happen the reactions cannot be happen enzyme substrate complex can be formed when in uh, substrate bind with enzyme but when they are having uh, the specific structures which matches uh, with one another so it means enzyme is having a rigid active site which cannot be changed like you can see in this diagram then Active side does not show any change here and then it can perform its function. So this process, this is called non-regulatory enzyme. Like they do not regulate their um, uh, structure. Although there are a very small number of enzymes here which are more specific here, uh, or uh, which uh, like performs their reaction according to uh, lock and key hypothesis but they are that is happened very specifically and that is called absolute specificity which is happened in urease like it does not change any single molecule or bond or atom in that so for example urea with water in the presence of urease in the presence of urease it performs its function and then um, uh, it will change into ammonia and carbon dioxide Okay, let's talk about the next uh, model or next hypothesis that is induced fit hypothesis that is opposite of that Koshland just proposed that in 1959 and according to that the active site is flexible you can see in this diagram this is enzyme and this is substrate so active site is um, like very very flexible so when the enzyme is going to attach or bind with that one it it is having conformational change in the protein structure like enzymes are protein so they attain the required shape or the shape according to the uh, substrate so it means that the enzymes are not specific and the active sites can be uh, molded according to the precise shape of that substrate and then the reaction going on goes on so this is called a regulatory elasteric enzymes uh, like um, uh, this uh, because it can occur the um, uh, the change in the shape of the enzyme that is temporary uh, if you can see here enzyme in the last is having the same shape and structure which uh, it is having before the reaction so for example uh, one enzyme we are having here hexokinase which we have discussed in uh, before as well in uh, glucose and atp and uh, 
here we can have one more example that is called carbonic hydrase carbonic hydrase is the enzyme which is very very important in respiratory system and whatever it binds number one it binds oxygen with with hemoglobin and form oxyhemoglobin to transport it from uh, the lungs to uh, the tissues on the cells and the other function of that it can uh, make or uh, like catalyze the reactions to form carbonic acid and having the check uh, to form carbonic acid and it forms um, uh, sorry uh, car bicarbonate h2co3 bicarbonate as well as it uh, just continue the formation of carbonic acid as well and later on it can break this um, H2CO3 uh, into this required products. Okay, so this uh, carbonic anhydrase just function not only for one metabolic activity processes, but uh, just almost two to three processes which are done by one enzyme. So it means that follows induced fit model. Okay, dear students, I hope you understood this basics of enzymes. So we'll continue inshallah in the next lecture. Wish you all the best.